Historic day for Guyana as ExxonMobil and Tullow announced double oil discoveries, bringing the total to 16 discoveries since May 2015, and the first group of Guyanese returned home from the storm-hit Bahamas. This is InfoHub for Monday, September 16. First up, ExxonMobil announced its 14th discovery of oil today, while Tullow announced its second discovery as Guyana's oil finds continue to expand at a rapid and astronomical rate. In early morning announcements, Exxon announced its 14th discovery in the Stabrook block, while Tullow announced its second discovery in the Orenduk block. Director of Guyana's Department of Energy, Dr. Mark Bainu. We're particularly appreciative of the prolific rate at which Guyana has been able to uncover a very valuable resource. These represent the 15th and 16th finds, respectively. Um, what it means for Guyana is that it does demonstrate that the country has substantial oil resources. It is likely that these latest discoveries will thrust Guyana into the top 20 countries with proven oil reserves. Azerbaijan, which currently sits at number 20 in the world, has proven reserves of 7 billion barrels, while Mexico, at 19th, has 7.6 billion barrels. We now have to do further tests to be able to determine potential barrel equivalency before we'll be able to make that projection. But it seems like Guyana is well on the, on the upward trajectory to be way beyond the 6.5 billion as we go forward. Embattled Venezuela, Saudi Arabia and Canada have topped the list of countries with proven oil reserves in the world. They are followed by Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, the United Arab Emirates, Russia, Libya and the United States, which rounded off the top 10. Additional discoveries in the coming years will see Guyana moving closer to the top 10 and possibly break into it. The rate of discoveries in Guyana has been deemed as astronomical when compared to the rate of discoveries in other parts of the world. His Excellency President David Granger addressed the nation today. He expressed his government's support for the holding of credible elections at the earliest possible time. The head of state reiterated his administration respect for GCOM's constitutionally safeguarded independence, noting its mandated responsibility for the conduct of general and regional elections. The independence of the commission and the integrity of the electoral process are essential to ensuring elections which express the will of the electorate. I am committed to providing governmental assistance to the commission to ensure that the forthcoming elections will not be contaminated by mismanagement or malpractice. The Elections Commission has a constitutional obligation, therefore, to ensure that everything necessary will be done to deliver credible elections. The President noted that it was GCOM's responsibility to ensure adequate resources and staffing. The publication of the official list of electors and administrative mechanism for efficient polling implemented. He also expressed full confidence in Justice Claudette Singh's ability. A governmental team met the chairman and commissioners of the Elections Commission on Friday the 13th of September to ascertain its readiness to conduct the elections. A parliamentary opposition team met the commission also on Tuesday the 10th of September. We are assured that the commission is doing everything possible to prepare to conduct credible elections at the earliest time possible. The Elections Commission must be allowed to continue the task of preparing for the forthcoming general and regional elections. The Commission has an obligation to assure the public that it is ready to conduct credible elections and to advise the presidents of its readiness to do so. President Granger reminded that only then can he constitutionally dissolve Parliament and name an elections date. It would be reckless and irresponsible on my part to appoint a date for elections without the Commission's advice and assurance that it would be ready to conduct elections on such a date. I call on all Guyanese to have confidence in the Elections Commission. Guyanese, I am ready to be guided by the Chairman's assessment of the Commission's preparedness 
to conduct elections. I urge everyone to uphold the Constitution and respect the judgment of our independent institutions and the people who have been appointed to manage them. I look forward to the Commission's recommendation to conduct credible elections at the earliest time possible. Seneca Thorne, InfoHub. The first group of Guyanese returned home from the hurricane-ravaged Bahamas last evening at the Chetty Jagan International Airport, and they were welcomed by several government ministers and family members. Orin Grimond, his wife and three children were greeted at the airport by Minister of State, the Honorable Don Hastings Williams, Minister of Citizenship, the Honorable Winston Felix, Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Honorable Dr. Karen Cummins, along with Director General of the Civil Defense Commission, Lieutenant Colonel Kester Craig, who spoke with InfoHub. To date, we have a live group that we keep in direct contact with almost 100 persons on a daily basis to identify their needs and to identify if people want to return. And through that uh, mechanism, we're able to identify the five persons that came here. Minister Hastings Williams expressed her satisfaction with the private sector's support in the relief effort thus far. We're very grateful for what Marriott is doing. They'll be accommodating them for at least five days free. And uh, this encourages us as a government to see that we can partner with private sector, business persons, non-governmental organizations. Additionally, Minister Cummings reiterated the coalition's government's preparedness to receive its citizens back to their homeland. She noted, too, that those returning home will be able to benefit from the rapid economic growth Guyana will be experiencing in the near future. We are willing to receive all of our Guyanese back. Um, we know we're, it's an important time uh, where we are the cusp of oil boom, oil and gas. And so uh, when they return, we, they can be part of the transformative changes that's going on in Guyana. The government has since announced its intention to donate $42 million to the Bahamas to aid in the country's current recovery efforts. For InfoHub, I am Kellon Rover. A new sexual offenses court was opened at the Essequibo High Court. It is the first such court on the Essequibo coast. Less than two years after establishing the first sexual offenses court in the capital city, the Supreme Court of the Judicature, in collaboration with the British High Commissioner in Guyana and the United Nations Children's Fund, today launched the third sexual offenses court in Saudi Essequibo. Under the leadership of Acting Chancellor of the Judiciary Justice, Janet Cummings Edwards, Victims of sexual violence have now been given a safe haven to testify without fear of secondary trauma. What you're about to see here in the sexual offenses court in a few minutes and the special measures room will tell you that we've come a long way in ensuring that victims are able to give their evidence in such a comfortable and a dignified way that ensures that justice is done. Minister of Social Protection, the Honorable Amna Ali, said one of the responsibilities of the government is to ensure that victims have faith in the justice system. He said the establishment of the Sexual Offences Court will do just that. We must be able to tell victims you are heard. And it's our job to adapt the system to their complex reality rather than being to adapt the system in itself. The specialized court has a main courtroom that will house the defense counsel, prosecutors and jurors. It has a closed circuit system linked up to the special measures room that will allow victims to give evidence without having to face the perpetrators. From the sexual offenses court in Saudi Essequibo with senior videographer Tej Paul Bridgebahan, I'm Alexis Rodney, for InfoHub. Still to come, better response time from GPL and La Parfait Harmony now managed by NDC. Details of these after the break. Are you ready to embark on a truly epic adventure to an undiscovered corner of South America where some of the most spectacular natural attractions are unveiled within a beautifully diverse landscape? from the wetlands and savannas 
to the ancient mountains, magnificent waterways and lush and rich in rainforest would provide a vast playground for some of the most exotic and breathtaking creatures on the planet, including many of the world's giant species. This untouched land of mystery and wonder serves up an exclusive experience for travelers. So are you ready for a new, awe-inspiring adventure? Welcome back to nature. Welcome to Guyana. Thanks for staying with us. The Guyana Power and Light Incorporated is ramping up efforts to improve its customer support service. In this regard, the company will be reviewing the emergency response times of its teams in critical zones, such as the east coast of Demerara and Georgetown. As it relates to responsiveness, we are working on increasing our teams and we've also reduced our response times. GPL's Director of Commercial Services, Rhonda Lafargue, explained that normally the estimated time for a response on an emergency is within a 24-hour window. However, she noted that with the new measures, we will see this time cut in half. If it's a minor emergency, they can fix it. If it's major, it may take a little longer, but you should have some action within 12 hours, but we're working as much as possible as soon as we get reports um, to see how soon we can actually have the crews at your location to have your problem resolved. The Commercial Services Director also disclosed GPL's plans to improve the rate at which meter applications are fulfilled. The fulfillment of applications within 12 days, that is for residential customers where no capital works are required. And we are working on seeing how we can best reduce this time because I know this is one of the concerns of customers, the time it takes to get um, after the application is done, the time it takes to have the installation of the meter. The major constraint in this regard is the unavailability of the preferred prepaid meter type. To address this, steps have been taken to streamline the procurement process so that there is a steady flow of the meters available for installation. Reporting for InfoHub, Nicosi Bruce. The responsibility for the management and administration of the La Parfait Harmony community now falls under the Neighborhood Democratic Council. So La Parfait Harmony community has been officially handed over to the Malgatut Mirzorgan Neighborhood Democratic Council. A memorandum of understanding to seal the handover was signed by Chairman of the Neighborhood Democratic Council, Dolores Eddies, and CHMPA's Chief Executive Officer, Leland Saul. The signing took place in the presence of Minister within the Ministry of Communities with responsibility for housing, the Honorable Annette Ferguson. Minister Ferguson called on the NDC and the residents to work hand in hand for continued development. Many of us don't like here taxes, taxes, taxes. But we have to face reality. In order for us to enjoy the basic services, that of a healthy environment, a healthy community, maintenance of our road shoulders. So residents, it is your responsibility to work closely with your NDC to ensure, as I said before, that the mandate governed by law for them to execute their, their, their mandate to you is that we must have collective and co-op. We must work collectively. We must cooperate with each other and we will enjoy a better community. With the handover, this means that the NDC will now be responsible for the management and administration of the community. Kenneth West and Yolanda Harvey, residents of the community, believe the handover will spur further development. I was long looking for, for a day like today. And I know things are going to be far better. And we can enjoy the place better because facilities are going to come in place. Right? That wasn't here before. And... You get more security in that you know where the place is valued so much and you get the, you, you get the urge now to upkeep it. I'm very happy about what took place today of the handing over of Parfit Harmony to, so that we can pay our taxes and also that we can get you know, a better community. The NDC will continue to work along with the CHMPA and other agencies to further develop the community. Meanwhile, as it relates to the paying of rates and taxes, 
the CHMPA's CEO explained that all properties must be evaluated before this can happen. Reporting from the La Parfit Harmony community, I am Isaiah Braffitt with Senior Videographer Teach Paul Bridgemohan for InfoHub. And for a quick recap of our major stories today, ExxonMobil and Tolo announced double oil finds today for a total of 16 discoveries since May 2015. Guyanese living in hurricane-ravaged Bahamas begin returning home. New sexual offenses court opened on the Essequibo coast and La Parfait Harmony now falls under the NDC. Check our Facebook and Instagram pages for more stories covering the observances of Indigenous Heritage Month and Education Month. That's all for today. Connect with us on WhatsApp, Facebook and YouTube. Much more news is on our website dpi.gov.gy and pop over to Instagram for the latest photo updates at DPI Guyana. Your bridge and weather reports are up next. Goodbye for now.